Hey everyone, and welcome to this CUBE conversation featuring Rudder Stack. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and today we are very excited to be joined by Eric Amwega, VP of Marketing and Operations at Rudder Stack. Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Tell us a little bit about Rudder Stack. I see from the homepage, Rudder Stack makes it easy to collect and send customer data to the tools and the teams that need it, but give us the real story here. Fantastic, so Rudderstack is a warehouse native uh, customer data platform that enables uh, companies to collect, to unify and activate their customer data, right? I'll, I'll talk more about what, it, what each of those pieces mean. Warehouse native, what that means is that instead of storing data, Rudderstack actually turns a customer's um, a data warehouse or data lake into a customer data platform and handles all of the collection the modeling, i.e. unification, and the activation of that data. Nice, so talk to me about how RudderStack enables customers to handle things like event data specifically, as we all know, we create all these events with apps and things like that, and we want this experience to be like real time. How do you guys enable customers to deal with event data? Absolutely, so um, the, the when the company started, the first product that we built was our event stream pipeline. And the event stream pipeline, what it does is that it collects uh, customer data from your website or your app, right? So each interaction uh, that a customer has with your web property, with your app property is an event uh, that's being created. Now, after collection, instead of us storing the data, which is what traditional CDPs do, we actually send that data in real time to downstream destinations. So for example, if you want to activate real time use cases, that data is collected and sent in real time uh, to downstream destinations. A downstream destination could be an email marketing platform. It could be you know, a Facebook ads platform. It could be any sort of uh, downstream tool that business teams use to activate customer data. In addition to that, we also have the ability to send that data into your warehouse or data lake, whether it's AWS S S3 or Redshift. And we expose that data for you to be able to model that data to build whether it's uh, ML models, whether it's um, you know AI use cases, you can do all of that modeling in your warehouse and then use our, uh, our reverse ETL pipeline to activate that data as well. So we have both the real-time pipeline to downstream destinations, but then also sending that data to your warehouse or data lake where you can um, do additional modeling and create more value from your customer data and activate it using our, our reverse ETL pipeline. Is that all done simultaneously? So the best way to think about it is there's uh, both real time and uh, batch use cases. So real time is done in real time, right? With very limited lag. There's batch use cases. Typically when you're sending data, for example, to uh, a data warehouse, you probably don't want to do that in real time. You can configure it down to five minutes, but uh, for warehouse or data lake use cases, uh, typically, um, you know, you're okay with a little bit of lag. You can configure it down to five, 15, 20, um, 30 minutes. And because when you're doing the modeling, chances are you want to run, you may want to run the data um, in batch, uh, right? You're doing modeling overnight, uh, creating those audiences, creating those user features, and then activating uh, those um, uh, downstream. But then there are also additional real-time use cases that don't involve just the event stream pi pipeline, sending data from web or app to downstream destinations. You may also want to activate uh, real-time use cases, for example, personalization. When a customer is interacting with the app or website, already having pre-computed uh, features, a feature could be something like um, a customer uh, uh, likelihood of churning, right? If you have a churn score and you have that customer who's been flagged as having a high likelihood uh, to churn, you could actually send a notification in real time. Um, you know, maybe it's a 20% off coupon in real time as the customer is uh, engaging with the app. So that's an example of a real time use case uh, that Radastack can activate. Real time is one of those interesting use cases, Eric, that we've been talking about a lot for the last few years. It's something that became no longer a nice to have for organizations in every industry as, as consumers, customers, business, personal, have this expectation that we're going to have a real time experience. And to your point, it's going to be personalized. The expectation of personalization is only increasing. Talk a little bit more, expand on the, the personalization. You talked about a real time use case, but enabling your customers to deliver that personalized experience their customers are demanding 24 by seven. 
Exactly. And actually, the um, I was looking at a study the other day uh, by McKinsey. Um, basically, they looked at what value does uh, personalization drive in terms of top line. Actually, it drives 15 to 25% in terms of uh, revenue left. That's revenue per customer, right? And that goes to your point. Customers increasingly uh, are looking for personalized experiences to to uh, engender greater brand loyalty. And it's something that you, you have to provide, especially if you're working with, uh, you know, B2C uh, type brands. So that's the first thing. So this is uh, an important use case that a lot of B2C uh, companies need to unlock uh, to win uh, to win market share and to drive uh, revenue growth. Um, specifically, um, how, how we enable that, we talked about uh, there's uh, the real-time activation uh, using our event stream pipeline, sending that to downstream destinations. That's kind of like the most uh, uh, basic level, right? Where you're just collecting data and based off of customer activity within a certain browsing session, uh, you can tailor that experience to the customer. But then when you start to think about the more advanced uh, customers get, for example, they want to calculate um, uh, machine learning uh, features in real time. There's kind of a number of different steps to that. The first step is, is uh, the data collection. There's a number of different data sources that, that um, um, uh, for customer data. We have talked about event stream, which is data from your website or your app. That's event stream data. You also have uh, SaaS data that lives within other SaaS tools uh, that you're using, whether it's a, a CRM platform, you know, for example, Salesforce or customer service platform, for example, Zendesk, right? So you have two types of data, behavioral data and relational data. You collect that into your uh, data lake or your warehouse. That's step one, data collection. The second one is unification, right? You need to resolve the identity of that data so that you can say, this specific customer, this is their behavioral data, right? And this is the additional data we have on them. For example, how much they've spent on the platform, right? Um, the last time they logged on uh, to, 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 to your app or, or your website. Once you have that rich customer profile, you can now calculate, um, uh, you, you can um, um, en enable uh, features and calculation of those features. A feature could be, you know, what I talked about, you know, revenue over the last six months, last time a user logged in, you calculate those values, right? So now in your warehouse, you have a user, the entire customer journey uh, from behavioral data and additional features that uh, could either be deterministic or probabilistic. And then now you can um, unlock true personalization where you're using all of the data that you have on the customer to deliver the experience that they need to make that next purchase. So the, the warehouse native CDP, you said it helps data teams collect data, unify it, activate it. You talked about some of the key features. Talk a little bit about your warehouse native CDP in terms of differentiators versus competition. Absolutely. So um, I'll be the first to admit that the customer data platform landscape is extremely crowded. And it's very difficult uh, to figure out, uh, you know, who's who within the customer data space. The way we like to think about it at Rattlestack, there's three primary uh, types of customer data platforms. You've got your traditional customer data platforms. You've got uh, a new entrant. Uh, it's called Composable uh, Customer Data Platform. And you've got the Warehouse Native Customer Data Platform, of which we're the leading uh, Warehouse Native CDP. And I'll talk about each of those. A package CDP typically, uh, traditional CDP typically, uh, they um, collect data, they store data in their own infrastructure. They hide it behind a black box and you have a UI that you engage uh, to, you know, for example, build audiences and then activate. So what ends up happening with a traditional CDP, you basically have a parallel architecture that's completely separate from where the rest of your customer data lives. That is your warehouse, that is your data lake, that's your Redshift, that's your S3. Now you have this parallel architecture and what that does is that you essentially end up creating uh, two problems. One, you've got data silos, right? You've got data sitting in your warehouse, and then you've got data sitting in a SaaS black box. That's a traditional uh, CDP. That's the first problem. You've created data silos where you may have different versions of the same, the same data. Second problem is that you're paying for storage twice, right? You're paying for storage in your own warehouse where you have your data anywhere that you're using to run your business. 
and then you're paying another SaaS platform to store uh, to store your data as well, right? And then obviously you're locked into whatever features uh, the traditional CDP has. If they have, uh, if they don't have real-time activation, you're kind of, you know, you you just have to use whatever features that they have. That's the traditional uh, CDPs that they've been around uh, since 2012 um, or thereabout. The second one is composable CDP. This is a new uh, model, which is kind of, um, you know, uh, cobbled together a number of different SaaS solutions to kind of build uh, the CDP, right? So you have, you know, somebody doing a vendor for event stream, you have a vendor doing extract transform load into your warehouse, and then you have uh, one of the traditional, uh, one of the uh, reverse ETL players activating that data. The challenge with that is that you actually have three different vendors that you have to manage. Your, the data schemas are different uh, depending on the data source, and you're having to do a ton of work to integrate uh, all of those uh, tools together to ensure that you have end-to-end -end data that you trust. That can be extremely costly from a resource uh, standpoint. Now, Rudderstack is a warehouse native CDP, right? And what the, the question our founders asked themselves when they were building uh, Rudderstack back in 2019, 2020, is if you were to build a best-in-class CDP, with the evolution technology since the CDP, uh, uh, the first CDP tools were put in place, how would you do it? The first answer was obvious, right? You've got a proliferation of um, uh, data warehouse and data lakes. You know, uh, there's the decoupling of storage and compute. Um, you know, they they have a ton of security features and um, and they've kind of become uh, the gravity where all of uh, operational data is moving to. So the question was how the challenge for our founders uh, was, can you build a CDP on top of uh, a customer's uh, warehouse to avoid the data silo issue, to uh, reduce the cost from having to store data in two different places, and hence Rudderstack was born, right? So that is uh, uh, the warehouse CDP. Now, the advantage that we have is that we actually have the end-to-end -end, uh, feature set. We've got uh, the data collection with our uh, what I would consider best in class events through pipeline for, for um, uh, behavioral data. We have our ETL pipeline specifically focused on customer data. That's data collection. We have, uh, we also have a product in beta right now called profiles that enables the unification. So unifying all of your uh, behavioral data and uh, transactional data or relational data in the warehouse. And then we also have reverse ETL to activate uh, that data. So it's kind of the end-to-end -end, uh, story, um, you know, with data collection, unification, and activation, which are really the three components that you need uh, for a customer data platform. Right, and you did a great job really describing the differences between traditional CDPs and what Writer's Tech has built. It's almost as if they deconstructed the traditional CDP and understood some of the challenges. So you must have a favorite customer story, you run marketing, that really articulates the value. And some of the things I was hearing as you were describing the differentiators is there's gotta be massive cost savings, ROI, maybe TCO reduction. Tell me your favorite customer story that you really think articulates Writer's Tech's clear value. Absolutely. Um, I would say, um, and this one is not public yet, but we work with a leading uh, shoe retailer. Um, and initially when we engaged with them, um, they had um, you know, a team of engineers uh, that were working to build um, uh, uh, connectors uh, for their ad platform. So essentially figuring out how to ingest data from uh, Facebook ads, from uh, Instagram ads into, into the uh, warehouse doing modeling on that data to uh, to identify uh, the to model the performance and analyze the performance of the ad campaigns. And then based off of that, sending um, data out back to the ad platforms uh, to, to you know, run new campaigns. And uh, we had uh, an interesting model uh, with them. We essentially had a POC, um, uh, a proof of concept, where uh, we had a number of uh, different yardsticks that we had to hit. And one of the things that they wanted to do, they wanted to prove actual value uh, from the product. So it's a paid POC over a period of uh, three months to prove the value of uh, Rudderstack. And uh, they ran the POC um, for three months and they saw a 400% increase in return on ad spend um, by using Rudderstack. And what was able, the, the reason we're able to unlock that is one, um, you know, we had native out of the box connectors uh, for, 
uh, most of the major ad plat platforms like Facebook ads, Google ads, etc. We expose the data uh, for them to model uh, uh, for uh, modeling and analytics uh, in their warehouse. And then we also have the reverse CTO pipeline to actually send uh, you know, the results of those uh, campaigns uh, down to uh, the, the, the ad platforms. And, and so you have that essential uh, loop uh, in terms of we're running a set of ad campaigns. Um, we are pulling that data into the warehouse. We're doing identity resolution in terms of who isn't interacting with those apps, uh, unifying um, that data and then figuring out the ROI and then investing in uh, the best performing uh, best performing ads. So that was just a simple uh, story where in three months, we're able to one, unlock, um, um, you know, basically enable them to get data flowing across the entire data stack, which is something that a team of five engineers had struggled with over a year uh, to do. We're able to do that in three months. And then two, time to value, actually uh, demonstrating the fact that we could um, have a positive ROI in a very short time period. So 400% uh, return on ad spend is 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 um, an incredible stat. That's nothing to scoff at, especially in this environment when uh, there's a lot of pressure on ad budgets. Being able to um, unlock significant um, uh, return on ad spend is is really invaluable. Wow, what a substantial customer story. I'm sure you had that was one of many that you had that really shows the value and how you're able to show customers ROI that quickly, especially in today's climate, incredibly important. So you guys were, are a young company founded back in 2019 and 2020 or so. What's next? Here we are almost halfway through calendar year 23. What are some of the things that we can expect if we keep our eyes on Rutterstack? Absolutely. So, you know, I think the vision has been clear from the very beginning. As we talked about the debt activation life cycle, um, the goal is to continue to beef up each and every step of that. We have a best in class um, uh, data collection with our event stream pipeline. Uh, we have a, a, our unification product called Profiles um, that uh, is in closed beta right now. And then we have a reverse ETL product. Uh, once all of those uh, three are alive over the next uh, few months, you essentially have the end-to-end -end, uh, warehouse native customer data platform that will enable our customers to unlock uh, you know, similar uh, value and even more value uh, similar to the case study that I, the customer story that I, I mentioned, um, I mentioned uh, earlier. So you'll continue to see continued innovation across the, the data activation lifecycle. And then there's two areas where uh, we, we're going to focus on from a, a feature standpoint. One is um, uh, data compliance, right? You're seeing um, you know, increasing activity from regulators, not just uh, in EMEA, everybody talks about EMEA, but also in the United States, uh, you know, California with CCPA. So um, we have a, a, an exciting set of uh, data compliance features. Uh, that we'll be launching, uh, that we have in place and we'll be launching and beefing up over the balance of the year and data governance as well. So when you look at, um, you know, customer data is extremely important. Um, it's the most valuable data that a company has, uh, but then it's not, it, you know, it shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't be hovering up all the data that you can get. You need to be intentional about it, that you're collecting the data that you want in the specifications that you want that data in. Uh, to ensure that you can unlock value uh, from that data uh, downstream. So the three areas uh, to look forward to over the next uh, six months, one is uh, excited about um, our unification product uh, profiles. Uh, so more to come on that. Uh, and then we're going to have um, data compliance features and data governance features that will, will, will unlock uh, our next um, our phase of growth. And uh, really as we, um, as, uh, as we continue to grow with large enterprises, these are features that, um, that are increasingly becoming non-negotiable uh, that a lot of other uh, CDPs cannot provide. Awesome, Eric, you guys must, we better let you go. You must be really busy. We so appreciate you coming on theCUBE talking about Rudder Stack's warehouse native CDP. You did a great job of articulating what it is, its value, how it's different. We so appreciate you for coming on theCUBE, Eric. Thank you, it was a pleasure talking with you. Absolutely, thank you so much, Lisa. I appreciate your time as well. My pleasure. Keep it right here for more action on theCUBE, your leader in hybrid tech event coverage.